This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. I just finished traveling Southeast Asia for 41 days, and I usually always get sick when I travel, and quite frankly, eating is difficult for me. It's hard to find a restaurant, and I'm spoiled in Austin with my personal chef. Well, I took these little packets with me this time, 30 of them, in my carry-on suitcase. They kept me totally healthy with 11 different secret ingredients. You can see them at NathanLacka.com forward slash juice. I'll tell you more later on in the show. That's NathanLacka.com forward slash juice. Nathan Latka here. This is episode 625. And coming up tomorrow morning, we hear from 30 year old CEO of the, well, not a CEO actually, but man, a senior editor at The Atlantic, which, uh, Derek Thompson. He's releasing his book, which helps you predict popularity in this new age we live in, the distraction age. So, why is he writing a book? How much money do he make on a royalty? And what's it mean for you? Tune in to find out. Good morning, everybody. Our guest this morning is Josh McCarter. He's the co-founder and CEO of Booker Software, a leading business management and marketing solution serving over 10,000 health and beauty businesses, small, large, medium, you name it. Josh has served in a variety of senior executive board and, and board roles at various technology companies, including Arbitech, Spa Finder, and Auto by Tell. Additionally, I've got some exciting things happening at Booker. We'll jump into it today. Josh, are you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. Let's go. All right. So tell us first, for those that are not, you know, working at a spa or a salon, what does Booker do? So Booker is a uh, business management and marketing solution for health and wellness businesses. And in a simple way, you can think of it almost like a uh, open table for uh, health and wellness businesses, where we not only manage uh, the online bookings and, and scheduling in general, uh, but really everything that the business needs to do to run its operation. So that's uh, everything from staff management, uh, time clock to CRM, uh, point of sale, and then uh, retention marketing. Mm. And, and talk to me about your business model. How do you grow your business? How do you make money? So the, the model is actually pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's largely uh, consists of, of subscription revenue from people that sign on to our platform. Uh, we charge anywhere from call it 100 to 250 bucks a month for the subscription revenue. Uh, then we also make money on merchant processing. We have uh, several integrated merchant processing partners. And then the third piece is we sell a uh, add-on product called Frederick, uh, which we acquired last year uh, that's in the marketing automation space. So I want to get more into Frederick in a second and talk about kind of why you made the decision to acquire and what Frederick does. Uh, first question, though, you know, I first came across you when I was having conversations with Revolution, uh, you know, the firm run by Steve Case up there in D.C. And, and Tig and many of the team members were very, very excited about what you were building. And I know, I mean, one of the big decisions that you made, I talk to companies all the time that say, oh, we help small businesses manage their business, right? It's like they're not as specific as what you've done. How big of an advantage? advantage is it for you to say specifically we're focused on the spa and salon management space? Yeah, so, you know, small and medium businesses are, you know, very fragmented. So if you, depending upon which study you look at, they'll give you numbers anywhere between, you know, 20 and 25 million businesses. And they each have very unique requirements. And so we, we started focusing on uh, the spa industry because this technology actually started in another company uh, called Spa Finder. And then I led the spin out of the technology and started Booker back in 2011. And, you know, what you find is, is that in health and wellness businesses that the use cases that they have for scheduling and staff management and customer management and point of sale um, are really similar. Uh, but if you compare that as an example to uh, a retail business or a restaurant, um, they have some very, very unique needs as well. And so really, I, th I think it's it's important to understand what type of customer uh, you serve best, uh, because those are the type of folks that are going to be the most successful uh, with your product and stay with you the longest. And, you know, frankly, we've had some ups and downs as, as we've learned that and have explored other markets uh, and kind of have come back just recently to really focus on the areas that uh, that we do the best in. And you mentioned the, the your kind of average customer right now is paying you, you said, did you say 150 bucks per month? 
Yeah, around there. And then we have merchant processing. And then if they, they buy the uh, the marketing product, it's a similar, at a similar price point. Okay. Do you see, I mean, let, let's say it's more than 80% of your revenue subscription, though? Yeah, uh, probably 70% of 70. our revenue. Yeah, okay. subscription. And then Mark, and then uh, obviously, I imagine a chunk of the 30, a big chunk is the merchant. And now you're just, just getting scaling up Frederick, right? Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Okay, so take us back for a second, because you did something interesting. This wasn't created from scratch. Rather, this was inside of a larger corporation, and you managed to spin out in 2011. That's an interesting model to follow. People are interested in how you do that. How did you structure that from a cap table perspective, from a money perspective? How did it work? Yeah, so it wasn't simple um, because the other company had, uh, you know, a lot of legacy shareholders. It was a business that was around since, uh, well, I think it was all the way back to 89 when it was wow. originally founded. That was my uh, birthday, so you- Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make us all feel old, time. but. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you know, obviously having been around that long, there was, you know, a lot of different investors in and out of the business. And, and so, first of all, just making sure that you've got you know, the right type of of structure when you spin it out so that um, you're, you know, you're not harming the prior shareholders, but at the same time that you're giving, you know, preference to the new shareholders and investors that are coming in that are building something, you know, that's fundamentally different than, than what the business started as. And so that, you know, that took probably, you know, six to nine months almost to get all the structure and the, you know, proper licensing agreements and IP assignments and all of that done. And, uh, and then we went from there to your point, you know, uh, Revolution led our Series A. Uh, we got that done in November of, of 2011. How much was that for? Uh, it was a $15 million raise. Okay, got it. And was that really your initial working capital or did Spa Finder also put an in initial capital? Uh, well, Spa Finder had put in the initial capital that built the, you know, base platform uh, that we started with. But at the time, as an example, you know, it was a 25, 30 person company. Um, most of it on the technology side, a lot of shared services back with Spa Finder uh, that we really had to break out over time and set up, you know, the company, a lot of 2011 going into 2012 was, you know, building it's our own infrastructure so that we weren't reliant on Spa Finder. And that's where some of the investment went. And what, what you, you mentioned, it was around 35 then. What was your, what's your team size today? Q1 2017? Oh. Around 200 now. 200. And you did 15 million uh, in your in your A round just for, for Booker. How much uh, in terms of total funding have you raised? Uh, we're just shy of 80 million at this point. We've done okay. three three rounds of financing. Got it. Okay. And then, so so I want to go back real quick to the spin out before we talk about the rest of the business. So what did, does Spa Finder have? Do you just give Spa Finder the company a chunk of Booker or, and then Revolution has some, and then you have some as founder? I mean, is that kind of how the cap table works? Yeah, more or less. I mean, there there was a, you know, you have to do all of the proper valuations when you do a spin out for, you know, obvious reasons. And and so we did that. And, and you know, 409A respect. or something? Yeah, it's not, it's it's like a 409A, but it's not, a, it's not exactly a 409A. Okay. And uh, you you wind up having a, you know, a value of the business and, and a certain amount of that is ascribed to the original shareholders. Got it. And, uh, and then, you know, obviously, as with any, you know, kind of venture backed company, when your investors come in, uh, they get preferred stock in the company. And, uh, and so that's kind of how we've uh, built up the cap table. And do you remember back in that first year? Well, I guess that was what, six, seven years ago now, back back in 2011, uh, how much revenue did you do in that first year? Uh, you know, we were in the low, low single millions. Low low single. Low. OK, so that's still pretty. I mean, you were able. the reason I ask is you were able to get then a fairly non dilutive, I guess, around from revolution if you were already doing in the low millions. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was, you know, it was a, a well priced round and and, uh, you know, I think that everybody's kind of happy with how it's all worked out. So take us forward to today. Uh, how many kind of spawn salons and, and small and medium businesses are you working with paying customers? So we have about ten thousand locations that are live on the uh, on on Booker, and uh, about two thousand that are on Frederick. Interesting. Okay, and when you say ten, that you use very specific verbiage there. When you say ten thousand locations, does each location pay the one hundred and fifty, or it's, is it seats yeah. per location, or? No, it's 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 actually a fee per location. So when I say locations, we might have you know, what we call a brand that has five locations or 10 locations, but typically they pay on a per location basis. And usually a company that has, you know, five or 10 locations is paying more um, because they're using more aspects of the system, API integration, custom, you know, development and so forth. Um, So the 150 is more related to kind of like your typical single location. 
Got it. I want to talk more about the levers you're using to drive expansion, uh, AR, uh, ARPU. You mentioned two of them, APIs and, and some other feature sets. But um, so can I, I mean, is the math like this? I take 10,000 locations times an average ARPU of about 150 to assume you're doing well, well north because there's only one revenue stream, but well north of $1.5 million per month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, let's go back to that. Uh, people are always trying to drive expansion revenue to get to that magical net negative revenue churn number. Besides right. the API access, besides kind of additional features, tell us some of the other ways you're driving expansion revenue with your inside. I imagine you have an inside sales team. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So most of it is, is really about um, upsell and uh, and obviously retention, right? Because if you're if you're losing more people than you're able to upsell, then you're you're not going to uh, you know, have a, a positive expansion rate. So uh, a lot of it is, is, first of all, focused on, you know, keeping your existing customers, keeping them happy, um, and at minimum, you know, paying what they originally did when they when they came in. Um, but that's not how you drive growth. You have to focus on uh, upsell opportunities. Uh, the first one for us is, is kind of a, a logical one that in a way we kind of backed into, uh, and that's payments. And so we, you know, now have uh, extremely high penetration of payments in our uh, customer base. And so that's Booker acting as, uh, you know, we're not officially an ISO, but if you think about kind of the payments industry, uh, we're considered an ISV, an integrated uh, software vendor, uh, where we lead with a software sale, but we integrate uh, merchant processing on the back end. And then we get a commission from the, our merchant processing partners um, for that. And uh, in, in the space for, uh, spas and salons, they obviously have a lot of in-store transactions that are happening, but more and more, there's a lot of online bookings that are happening, whether that's, you know, through a web browser or through mobile. And so we, you know, take deposits, we take prepayments, uh, we sell memberships online, um, all of those type of components that require a credit card processing on the back end that ultimately we make some type of a commission on. Um, that, so that's, that's that deal. The, the, is that through the deal with First Data? Uh, First Data is uh, is our new investor and uh, our Congrats. largest new partner. Yeah, they came in our Series C. That was in uh, in 2015. Um, but we have been doing a lot of work to integrate with them, uh, and they get positioned so that we can start going to market through their uh, various sales channels. Uh, they're the largest merchant processor in the world. In the U.S., 50% of uh, credit card transactions run through their rails, and so they have a lot of direct deals. Um, themselves. They also sell through ISOs. They sell through banks where they're kind of partners, uh, Citibank and Santander and SunTrust. And then they have joint ventures with Wells Fargo, PNC and Bank of America. And so, you know, why we chose uh, First Data as our partner was because we will have access um, to those distribution channels. And we're just getting at the point right now is that we're rolling those out. Yeah. Now, give us a sense of total transaction while I'm going through your your kind of system. I mean, is it more or less than fifty million per month? Oh yeah, yeah. No, we did last year. We did uh, almost three and a half billion dollars of transactions uh, across the ten thousand locations. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So three point five billion. Wow. Yeah, that's that's super impressive. So um, you've got the first data. They came in in twenty fifteen in your last round of funding. So that was over a year and a half ago. So right now, you're either in acquisition talks or you're raising a new round. Which one is it, Josh? No, it's neither. Actually, we, we raised enough. Come on, we have some, we've got some good runway, which is uh, which is nice. Um, I think, like you know, a lot of uh, venture back SaaS businesses last year was you know a year of uh, focusing the business, um, you know, kind of right sizing some of our expenses, and uh, we bought a lot of time uh, when we did that. And so now we're you know it's really about I got you know twenty four months of execution in front of me, and uh, that, does that mean twenty four months of runway? Yeah, twenty four months of runway on yep. cash burn, right? Or like yeah. like net burn. Yeah, that's great. Yep. That's really great. Uh, yeah, it's good good position to be in. Um, last few kind of numbers questions before we talk quickly about Frederick and then wrap up. Uh, gross customer churn. Ignore upsells and expansion, but gross customer churn in this space tends to be high because these are small businesses. What are you guys at? Yeah, you know we we don't divulge our our customer churn numbers. What I can tell you is that typically. Um, SMB businesses are, or SMB SaaS businesses churn at a, at a very high rate, you know, north of 2%, some up to 5%. I monthly, will tell you, right? we, yeah, monthly. Um, I can tell you we are below the, uh, the low end of that. Right. Uh, and I can also tell you that 50% of our churn is actually people going out of business. Yep. And so that's a, you know, that's really one of the difficult parts of the SMB market is that. Uh, their failure rates are, are high. I've read reports that say, you know, uh, one report that says in 
three years, 50% of SMBs are out of business. Another report that says in five years, 50%. So somewhere between those two is where the truth lies. And then what do you, in terms of growing uh, the customer base, what, what are you spending to acquire a new customer? You know, it's, I would say that's also not a number that we, that we share, but you know, most SMB uh, SaaS and, and marketing businesses are spending anywhere between about $1,500 and $3,500 to acquire a new customer. And so um, obviously when you look at the LTV to CAC ratios and months to pay back, you want to be at the, at the lower end of that. Yep. And so that's certainly what we're you know, driving towards. And having channel partnerships is one of the ways that you can do that, like our deal with First Data, you know, where you don't incur all of the, all of the CAC um, up front. You, do, you pay it out over time through a rep share. Let's quickly for a minute talk about Frederick. How did you find the deal and why did you end up pulling the trigger and making the acquisition? Yeah, so they, they came to us looking for a partnership, and it was a uh, you know small team based in the Bay Area, super smart guys, uh, two co-founders, one out of Dell and one out of Constant Contact, and they had been working on the same problem that we had been uh, working on uh, at Booker related to marketing uh, products and services for service-based SMBs. This is HireFrederick.com, right, Josh? That's what it is. That's, yeah. that's what it is, exactly. And, uh, and so anyway, what they had done was really look at how the uh, service-based SMBs are retaining their customers. And there were companies in the market like Demandforce. Yep. Uh, and Demandforce you know, had a older system that basically focused on uh, how do you retain customers based on their last visit, um, which is nice, but there's a lot more data that you can use to intelligently market to, uh, to the customers. And so what we ended up doing was, or what they ended up doing with Frederick was almost a play out of the travel industry where they brought the concept of yield management to local services. And by that, I mean, they would look into an individual merchant's calendar in the future and say, okay, on Tuesday, uh, you have, you're at 30% occupancy. Uh, you have these services, these people, uh, or these uh, rooms available. Let's identify people in the past that have purchased from you on those days, those services um, from those people and do a targeted offer, kind of a one-to-one -one offer, rather than having to do a group on or having to do a massive discount that's blasted out to everybody. And so what we saw was, you know, early on by leveraging this data, they were really able to get super high conversion and retention metrics uh, with existing what is super customers. high? Super high being like, you know, call it uh, 14 times ROI just based on the on the bookings that are generated through Frederick on a on a monthly basis. Got it. Well, that's impressive. So, yeah, yeah. Guys, this is a hot space, too. And if you want more context, you should. I mean, I always like getting additional points of view. Chris Golek came on on episode uh, 605 uh, and articulated they'll break 100 million bucks in ARR in, in 2017. Now, Josh, they have a much, much smaller customer base than you guys. Yeah, they're probably getting a lot more per, uh, you know, per individual user. Yeah, yeah they're at about right. 400 customers. Obviously, you're you're about what five, ten, yeah, six, yeah. Uh, three times that, five times that, something like that. Anyways, yeah. uh, um, great. Okay, good. That's helpful to understand. So, hirefrederick.com. Yeah, I'm on it right now, and and this looks like still an independent product. I mean, there is it. I miss, is it integrated heavy on the back end? It's integrated heavy with Booker, but really the, the thing that we loved about Frederick was it doesn't just work with Booker, but it works with a lot of our competitors in the health and wellness space. <laughs> nice. and, it also, and it also works in the automotive space. Um, we see huge value. We've got some customers that have driven over $100,000 of, of service business uh, on Frederick alone. It's amazing. Uh, you have a team of 200. Are you guys all based up in New York? No, we're, we're a little bit uh, uh, split out from New York at this point as we were scaling. Uh, we wanted to find a couple other markets to grow in. And so we, uh, we have a tech development office in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, we acquired Frederick, which is in the Bay Area. And then our, uh, our current expansion uh, location is in, uh, is in Scottsdale. Scottsdale, man, Scottsdale's hot. Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, it is. Not temperature wise, I mean, startup wise, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So guys, I'm so glad to be back in Austin. I just got back from a major tour of Southeast Asia, went to Sydney, Bangkok, Bali, and Japan. And you know, I always get sick when I travel. And this particular trip, my gosh, 15 different airports, 20 different hotels. I mean, imagine flushing in airport bathrooms. I was worried about germs and getting all the nutrition I need. I mean, finding a restaurant in Japan, difficult because nothing's in English. So it's hard enough to figure out the train system. But my point is, I had a guy named Drew Cannoli on the show who said, Nathan, if you're concerned about that, 
take these little green packets with you. You just mix them once per day with water. They'll keep you super healthy. You get all your nutrients, and they'll keep you from getting sick. So I took them, and guys, they worked unbelievably well. I got no sickness, just mixed them with water once per day. They didn't make my water bottles all sticky. That's, like, nice. A lot of these mixtures, they make them sticky. It was very clean and smooth. Took them once per day, never got sick. So we've got 11 superfoods. And they're perfect if you're not traveling, but you're just on the go from your office to work. So you can check them out at NathanLatka.com forward slash juice. That's NathanLatka.com forward slash juice. Awesome. Well, Josh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? My favorite business book. Well, I'll tell you what my my favorite new business book is. Uh, One of my buddies just wrote it. It's called Make Big Happen by Mark Moses. And I'll let you look it up and see what it's about. Make uh, Big Happen by Mark Moses. We'll check it out. Number two, Josh, is there a CEO that you that you really respect or that you're learning from and studying? That I'm learning from and studying. You know, the one who I'm studying the most right now actually is Steve Case. He came out with a book called The Third Wave. Uh, and a lot of his insights that he's brought from what he's seen over the years uh, and how that projects into the future, I think, is well worth reading. Number three, besides your own, do you have a favorite online tool like HostGator? Favorite online tool? Um, man, I'd say the one that I use, I don't even know HostGator. The one I use the most is OpenTable. I'm always booking restaurants. Yeah, always booking, uh, <laughs> always booking restaurants. Number four, yes or no, do you get eight hours of sleep every night? Uh, not according to my Fitbit. <laughs> and what do you get on average? Uh, probably six and a half. All right. And what's your situation? Married, single, you have kids? Married with uh, two daughters. All right. Very good. And and Josh, how old are you? Uh, 44. Last question. Take us back 24 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? What do I wish my 24 24- You know what? That it's uh, Startups are a blast, but they are not easy. They are not easy. <laughs> Top job. There you have it from the founder of Booker, Josh McCarter. Startups are a blast, but they are not easy. Back in 2011, he spun out Booker from uh, Spa Finder, did a $15 million round with Revolution. This was back in 2011. Uh, did over a million bucks in first year revenue. Now scaled well over to 200 people between New York City, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and Scottsdale, helping spas and salons just manage their business, process merchant fees, or, or just transactions. They did over $3.5 billion in 2016. Storing about 10,000 of these locations at an average ARPU of about 150 bucks a pop. So they're well north of 1.5 million bucks in MRR, sub 2% in gross customer turn uh, monthly. Again, CAC to LTV ratios, targets uh, 1 to 3, just like industry standard. Just made a big acquisition, announced their partnership with First Data. Data, First Data came in on their 2015 round as a new investor. Now Josh is using that, obviously, as a great expansion channel for new customers. Josh, thank you for taking us to the top. All right, Nathan, thanks for your time. If you enjoyed Josh today, go back and listen to Dave Curry yesterday. He runs Winmo, and they've just passed $1.1 million in monthly recurring revenue, helping 2,000 customers close more sales. It would mean the world to me if you guys got any value from this episode, if you would go leave a review on iTunes right now and then subscribe. You know, I hustle like heck to get these episodes out every freaking day for you guys. And trust me, I love it. I would do it with no listeners. But boy, oh boy, it makes my day and it makes my team's day when we see great reviews and get your feedback. So thanks so much. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars. And I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money, HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan.